daily recap for Monday, September 23, 2024. Right now, it's about 7.46 a.m. Eastern. My name is Sam, and what we do here each day is start out the morning by identifying levels of support and resistance in the SPY that we use for entering trades in the E-mini futures during the open session for the day. The E-mini symbol is ES, and we're currently trading the December contract, which is the ESZ contract, Z as in Zulu. We follow a process and a set of rules that has a high probability of grabbing successful trades at these levels. Today, there is a PMI data release at 9.45 a.m. Eastern that might affect the market, something to be aware of. And there are a couple levels on the board today that have longer-term significance and will probably stay on the board for the rest of the week until and unless the SPY hits them. Otherwise, these levels are mostly typical and are good for today only. You'll notice the pair of levels at 568.66 and 567.84. Those are in lighter blue lines. This would normally be a zone and would be identified a little differently, but so far in the overnight session, price has been hanging out in this area, and while the whole area could provide support and or resistance, depending on what price is doing at the open, I think each level could provide an opportunity for a trade by themselves. I would say it depends on how far away price is from these levels at the open and how fast they're coming into them later, if they do it at all. If the market is moving slow, each level could be treated as individual entry points, but if the market is moving fast, the whole area could be treated as a zone for general support and or resistance. That's the way I see it. After the closing bell, we come back to this same chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels and any profit gained or loss incurred for the day from trading these levels will be logged in a tracking system that we will go over at the end of the video. This way, you can see the long-term effectiveness of this trading approach. Before signing off, we'll look at some longer time frames and get an idea of what the near term might look like. I'll catch you on the other side after the market closes. It is after 8 p.m. now, and pretty straightforward day. The market was pretty flat, as you can see, but one level was respected, and we got one trade out of it. So how did that happen? Well, again, right after the market opened, they came down into the level and bounced up. A pretty good base hit if you're willing to take it early on. But even if you wait for 15 minutes, let the market settle in, today worked pretty well. Out of the money a little bit, they came up, and you could have ridden us up. I actually tried to ride it up even with a larger than normal base hit and got stopped out. But the base hit was right here. They never got to any other level. The bottom of this zone slash individual levels, like I said this morning, if they were coming into these levels kind of slow, the market was not moving a lot, then each individual level could react as independent trades, and that's exactly what happened. Effectively, this entire thing was the zone, but they never got down to the bottom. So one trade, that's pretty much it. Let's see if we can determine anything from the daily chart of the SPY. So this is today's candle, and they're right in the middle of this kind of mess here, and there's really not a lot to see. Maybe if I go into a 60-minute chart, a few things become maybe a little bit more apparent. Look at it this way. So from the bottom where they closed on this day, whatever day it was, uh, September 18th, this is a pretty big, you know, move to the next to the next day. And you could say if they're coming down to the bottom of this area, that could be a bullish consolidation for a move higher. But at the same time, they've dropped here, so now they're climbing up to the top of this area, and this could provide some resistance. They've just got to break through the highs they keep making to go higher, obviously. But if they break some lows down here, then they could go lower. So really, they're in kind of an area that is constraining itself. They're basically making a range. It could be a little bit more defined, and we're going to find out as time goes on what their decision is. I don't see any big data releases coming up that could move the market. We had the big FOMC meeting last week, and obviously that has set the tone a little bit, pushed them up. In fact, perhaps maybe the E-minis themselves are heading to a new destination. What do you see on the daily chart of the E-minis, the current contract, the December contract? Well, they're right up under 5,800, kind of a nice round number here. This looks bullish on its face on the daily chart. Let's zoom in a little bit, take a look at the hourly chart, see what we can tell. Similar to the, the SPY, but more bullish in my opinion. So 5,800 is important. What's the destination in the E-minis? That's something to consider. It's not just the SPY. They do correlate, however, one of these instruments will probably meet their destination soon, and then we'll have a clear picture of the near term. 
Here's the trade I took. You'll notice that it's right before 945. I'm letting the market settle in for 15 minutes. And you'll see a limit order appear on the E-mini chart over here to buy two contracts when they got back down to this range. And that 945 AM data release pushed the market down, then back up. I got my six points with one contract, trailed the remainder just for a little bit. So been better off if I just got a base hit with my, my two contracts at six points in that neighborhood. But I'm not complaining. I'll take the base hits. And then I'll scrub ahead here to show you that while they went up close to the next level, and I had an order there, never hit it. And they went down close to the bottom of the so-called zone, the 567.84, but they never got there. So nothing really to show you other than the fact that I had orders in and I was ready to take them, but nothing happened. End of the day, just kind of stepped away. I think I stopped recording this at some point. Around 2 o'clock or so. Nothing after that. So one trade for me. And on the logs, the first one's the play in by the rules log. Simple one base hit for four points without very much drama at all. And my trade was 3.37 points. Why? Because with two contracts, it was $337.50, just to be precise. So that's what I meant when I said if I just did four points at a base hit and not worried about taking a trailer or anything, it would have done better. But you never know. Either way, the base hits are what add up over time. That wraps up today's market recap. So remember, these levels that we identify before the opening bell are key to staying ahead of the game and taking advantage of these high probability trade setups and e-minis. These aren't just lines on a chart. They're insights into the market's psychology. So I break down these zones and these levels that professional traders are likely watching. And trust me, the market doesn't wait around for you to catch up. If you found value in today's levels and analysis, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you never miss the next day's video. Also, please let me know in the comments what you're trading or if there's anything specific you'd like me to cover in future videos. Your feedback does help me tailor these recaps to what matters most to you. As always, stay disciplined, manage your risk, keep piling up the base hits, and I'll see you in the next recap video. Have a great rest of your day.